I had a request from a customer recently to convert a mains powered bar fridge to 12 volts. So I thought I might do a bit of a video on that quickly. Um, and it, it's quite feasible to do that. And depending on what you want to achieve, uh, it, it's probably um, cost effective to do it too, uh, because 12 volt compressor fridges are expensive. Uh, anything from one to two and a half, maybe more thousand dollars in Australia. Um, so they're not cheap. Uh, I suppose the smaller ones are a better price, but this particular application was a guy wanted to have a fridge that was more in sympathy with the um, 1950s Viscount caravan he'd, he'd, done, he'd, he'd done up and maintained that look about it. So he wanted a fridge that was um, in line with that. So he bought a 240 volt uh, fridge that was retro and asked me to convert that, which I've done. So we'll have a look at that in a minute. But you might also want to uh, have a greater choice of fridges because there's not a lot of choice in 12 volt fridges. So that could be a uh, secondary consideration. You might want to find something that will fit in the space that you've got and some fridges may not um, or maximize the space that you do have, uh, perhaps in a pop top or something where you want a bit bigger fridge, but perhaps can't, you know, I don't know. You, look, there's options about why you might, might want to do that. So. I thought I'd just do this video to show you. So the problem with the 240 volt fridge in running that in a caravan, you can run it through an inverter, but the overheads of running an inverter are significant. Um, they, they can draw anything from uh, 25, say, to um, 50 amps a day just in idle current, not actually running the fridge. There's a 10 or 15% overhead uh, in the conversion inefficiencies to go from 12 to 240 to allow the inverter to run the fridge. You need a thousand watt inverter to run a, certainly to run one of the larger fridges. While the fridge only draws 140 watts when it's running, it can have a start current in excess of a thousand watts to uh, get it started. And there's been, there's surprisingly few inverter compressor fridges available, I suppose, at a reasonable price. Um, there was one that was quite popular recently, I think Samsung or someone had it out, and that's since been cancelled. But a few people were buying those, and you can run those on a 300 watt inverter. So that's a little bit more practical, but you can get a good sized fridge, and I think they were only 600 bucks for, a, say, a 400 litre fridge. So that's a lot better than trying to pay two or $3,000 for a 12 volt fridge uh, to do it that way. But as I said, I don't think they are around at the moment, and so um, 12 volt conversion is feasible but there are issues with converting a 12 volt fridge you can't have a cyclic defrost fridge that you have normally at a house you've got to have a fridge that's designed the way they used to do them years ago where they have a, an exposed or um, um, you know uh, evaporator plate on the inside that you can see the actual element that gets cold or it's in behind the back wall but it can't have cyclic defrost which is a fan forced and uh, fan forced um, evaporator that sits under the floor of the freezer has a fan blowing through it it all because every 12 hours there's a heater element that switches on and melts all the ice that forms up between the the fins on the it's like a car radiator and ice builds up so every 12 hours um, it switches the heater on which draws about 900 watts this is a domestic fridge and melts the ice you can't have that in uh, in a mobile situation for off grid use so as a result um, they're not compatible, but unfortunately that's probably 90% of the market that's they have cyclic defrost, but those fridges are around, but they're generally all fridge uh, They may have a freezer compartment um, So we'll see that on this fridge. We have a look at it it's, it's got to be this style of fridge. So if you're thinking about doing it Yes, it is feasible to do it and you can pick up fridges good fridges in very good condition for a very, for a very low cost um, and as I said there's lots of options available in the second-hand market. So, uh, of fridges, you've just got to find something that's compatible with converting to 12 volts. But you do have a lot of options in style and design, etc., and quite low cost to buy them. All right, let's go and have a look at them. Okay, so here's the Husky. Um, as I said, 110 litre, I think it is. Uh, as you can see, it's um, got more classic lines to it, which more in, in you know fits in with if you're doing up an old 
Viscount or a Millard or some old van from the 50s or 60s or you know that had this sort of styling to it then this is ideal and you can't get that in a 12 volt fridge so that was the motivation for this let's have a look at the inside so currently oh just before we do we'll just have a look so this is now running on 12 it's half a degree so it's got it set a little bit too cold at the moment so we've got all the shelves out so here these are the criteria this back plate the evaporator um, now they're not always exposed this is a fully exposed evaporator um, so this defrosts by simply as it cycles off the water will just drip off into um, the drip tray down the bottom down here and run out uh, so that's how defrosting's done we've got a mechanical thermostat in this this has just got, got a simple knob on it no electronics runs over through a mercury uh, tube that's got mercury I assume or something whatever equivalent of that is these days down to a thermostat down here little thermostat bulb uh, so this is your temperature control and if this is what you see now some of these fridges have a freezer up here small freezer with a little lid that opens you know a bar fridge and that is actually this plate is actually the freezer compartment it sits in the top section up here with a little door on it that you pull down if the, and it looks like this if it's got that then you can turn that into a 12 volt fridge so even has a light on it I had to convert that as well but around the back here so what was done is we pulled out the original um, 240 volt uh, system that was in here and replaced it with this complete unit here which is from a 12 volt camping fridge uh, and this came out of a, about a hundred litre fridge so it's the same size it easily handles this fridge uh, this compressor draws about four amps running maybe a little bit over um, so power consumption wise it's better than a mains operated fridge which would probably be drawing seven or eight amps with an inverter involved um, to run the fridge so you know economically power wise it's absolutely fine to run off solar now um, the only other thing on these when you use this type of fridge these fridges are designed to um, uh, dissipate the heat that's produced not through this arrangement here where you have a coil with a fan on it um, they, they typically a lot of these fridges now they use the case to dissipate the heat so the whole outside wall gets warm you can feel the warmth here as it dissipates the heat away I've changed that and that's now using this because I don't want the walls getting warm I want maximum possible uh, cooling uh, when the fridge manufacturers make these fridges for 240 they don't have a lot of concern about the uh, temperature loading and we're a hot country a lot of this stuff's built for you know Europe and America so it's important to insulate around this um, to improve its its uh, you know, lot, it, to in, improve its thermal efficiency by not dissipating a lot of the cold out through the walls which you quite often feel with these fridges so that's it um, what does this cost to do uh, well it would depend where you, if you had to buy this if you have to buy this kit here uh, you're probably going to be looking at um, you know maybe four hundred dollars or something Australian I'm talking about but you could get this out of an existing fridge this could come out of a 60 litre 50 litre camping fridge they've all got this same arrangement in them typically except Engel uh, this is the style of uh, unit so you could pick one up second hand and that could be installed in this fridge I've done that bit previously um, and then there's just the labor time involved in doing it so it's practical for this thing if you if you had the fridge and you bought one of these things second hand for 50 bucks and you bought a camping fridge for 150 bucks you know, you might get out of all this for, say, I don't know, $500, $600 or something of that order. And that's good because you get the fridge you want. Um, not take whatever the limited offerings are. And, and this is probably most relevant for this situation here where this guy wants a fridge that's suited to, um, you know, his caravan. And he wants to maintain that style, not have a new style fridge. But you also might want uh, a fridge that fits in the space you've got. And again, there's a lot of secondhand bar fridges around uh, like this for 50 bucks. And they're in very good condition. You might pay 100 bucks. But you get 
you know, a good fridge for that price. They're, they don't have a high value secondhand, even brand new, they're only a few hundred dollars. So it's, you know, it is feasible to convert these to 12 volts. Anyway, this is done. This one works. Um, works great, pulls down very quickly and runs, it's probably drawing on average around two and a bit amps per hour, maybe, um, depending on how often you open the door. So um, yeah, there you go. It is uh, certainly feasible to do a 12 volt fridge, but it must meet that criteria. It must not be frost free. It must be a, uh, sorry, cyclic defrost and not frost free. It's got to be of this style of fridge with no fans and stuff in it, um, no heaters, etc. All right, thanks for watching. Hope that helps. And put some stuff in the comments if you've got any questions. Cheers.